Hi, how are you? Hi, good. Um, I was just wondering about what your opinion is on the uh, Harvard University so oh, men's soccer football. team. Oh, the football. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Um, yes, I, I About the uh, yeah. comments rating women from 1 right. to 10 and uh, saying which style they'd like to have sex with them. And so, Harvard football team. So, well, yeah, my kind of football. <laughs> my kind of football. The gay football. <laughs> The one, the one for women and homos. <laughs> Not real football. The Harvard soccer team um, did what boys often do, which is seven, nine, six. Locker room talk. This is how men speak. And pretending that it isn't, and creating this schism between public and private, you know, forcing people to behave one way privately and one way publicly is deeply psychologically dysfunctional. Denying that men are visual animals and quite like to look at sexy women, quite like to rape them sometimes. Who cares? <laughs> is that cause to cancel an entire season of the sports? Of course it fucking isn't. We don't just tolerate women who behave vindictively and spitefully and cruelly towards men. We celebrate them. We put them in magazines. We often don't check their stories very carefully. Rolling Stone. <laughs> we believe anything. We're told to listen and believe. Whatever women say. But when men do it, when men dare to express sexual interest in a woman, it's a sort of crime. It's a secular heresy. A couple of steps away from being illegal, surely. Well, you cannot deny human nature. You cannot deny people's natural instincts and impulses. Men like to look at things. Women like to, you know, on the whole, generally, more emotional, more empathetic. Men are sort of systematizing and visual, by and large. Punishing boys for being boys is going to fuck them up. And the real victims of this are actually women. Because although it is bad for men, and although men end up a little alone, they can retreat into porn and video games and each other's company. <laughs> and sports and, you know, working out all the rest of it. Women in their 30s who are still single are fucking miserable. <laughs> I don't know a single woman in their 30s without a boyfriend who's happy. Why? Because this sort of ugly brand of feminism, this utterly hypocritical set of speech codes, with one rule for boys and one rule for girls, is driving the sexes apart. And this is another example of how feminism hurts women the most. It always has. Um, Cancelling a season of soccer, gay as it is. <laughs> I mean, please. Ice hockey. Basketball, you've got so many good sports. Well, not if you're white, I guess, but talk, talk about structural racism. Try being, a, try being a white guy who wants to play basketball. Um, <laughs> this, um, this sort of cancelling a whole season of sport because men were being boisterous and cheeky is such a perfect example of the lunacy and hypocrisy taking root in this country and in its educational establishments. This is precisely the place that men should be letting off steam, that women should be finding out what they like, what they don't like, that the sexes should be sometimes awkwardly, sometimes confusedly, very often harmoniously, finding out about each other, working out what's okay and what's not okay. Universities have no place interfering in people's private lives like that. No place legislating how people speak. And no place punishing boys for being boys. It's pathetic. Um, and I think... <laughs> I think universities need to get out of people's bedrooms. And those universities that refuse to get out of people's bedrooms will see their attendance and enrollment drop, they will see their alumni donations drop, because you know what? Sure, Harvard's never going to want for applicants, but Harvard has plenty of Republican alumni, alumni. Plenty of people who went to Harvard will just not donate anymore. It will hurt them in the end. I see a sort of, in the marketplace of universities, I see a sort of um, split opening up between places like DePaul University, mental, <laughs> <laughs> completely mental. Why is it always the Catholics? <laughs> And the university, I can say it, I am one. 
And the University of Chicago, which has announced that for people coming in 2017, 2018, do not expect any trigger warnings, do not expect any safe spaces. This is somewhere you come to learn. So I think another example of capitalism working well, I hope is that this is going to be corrected by market forces. People are just not going to apply, they're not going to give money, and they're not going to um, uh, be fond of institutions that have these crazy social justice politics. The idea that Harvard of all places, by some metrics, the best school you have, has fallen to this nonsense. Yale has fallen, of course, to the insane garbage of cultural appropriation. Cultural appropriation. It's how art works, you idiots. It's not racism, it's how art functions. The idea that the best institutions in this country fall into this stuff is depressing. But um, there are schools that are better. Everybody I meet now who asks where to apply, I tell them to go to the University of Chicago. Um, and I'm sure there are other schools and they're going to merge over time. Um, it's, it's, it's the single biggest red flag that the higher, the, the very best institutions, the very best educational institutions in this country are lost to reason and lost to common sense. Um, and I, I, I hope it hurts them. Uh, I, hope the, uh, I hope applications go through the floor. It's Harvard, so it'll take them a bit longer to, to get stung, I think, but, but it's not on and it's not okay. And punishing boys for being boys is, is one of the things that's causing the most problems in, in civilization and society. Um, this election, in many respects, is a sort of war between men and women, the sort of... Um, feelings brigade of the institutional democrat party who want the state to be the provider of all things you know just want, want everybody to be dependent on this paternalistic super state and they sort of rugged sometimes rough around the edges but strong and proud and patriotic values of a of a daddy figure who isn't always perfect doesn't always say exactly what you want him to but you have confidence in your father you know that he's going to do right by you, that he has your best interests at heart. And if you listen to what he says, vote him into the White House. Things will be okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.